Welcome to our viewers on PBS in America and also around the globe. Turning up the pressure on Tehran, that's what the European Union has done today, imposing some of the toughest sanctions ever in protest over the country's nuclear program. The measures include a ban on all new oil contracts. But in retaliation, Iran has threatened to close the Strait of Hormuz, through which a fifth of the world's crude oil is transported. From Dubai, James Reynolds starts our coverage on this high-stakes test of wills. The Gulf is the closest that Iran has to a giant cash point. The European Union has now decided to stop paying into Iran's account. It will no longer buy any oil from the Persian state. And so Iran loses 20% of its oil market. This is why. The West fears that Iran is trying to learn how to build nuclear weapons. It's a charge that Iran denies. Iran continues to defy UN Security Council resolutions uh, and enriches uranium to 20% uh, at COM, for which there is no plausible civilian explanation. Uh, and so I think it's very important for us to agree these measures today to increase the peaceful, legitimate pressure uh, on the Iranian government. The Gulf is Iran's supply line to the outside world. And exporting oil helps to keep the country's government in money and in power. So the EU has decided to go after Iran where it hurts. Iran warned the EU not to do this. To make its point, it carried out war games in the Gulf and it even threatened to close the narrow, crucial Strait of Hormuz. In response, the world's most powerful military has sent an aircraft carrier to make sure that the strait stays open. The US and Iran have clashed here before. America wants to keep the price of oil stable. If any limitation is put on the availability of oil in the international market, one would expect the price of oil to go upwards. It's that simple. Some will be ready to make up the shortfall. In Oman, smugglers prepare to get goods into Iran. Iran's rulers may be used to isolation, but losing a source of income may be much harder to bear. James Reynolds, BBC News, Dubai. OK, so just what do these sanctions mean and what's the impact of them going to be? I'm joined now by Trita Parsi, the president of the National Iranian American Council. Trita, thanks very much for coming. And let's start with this uh, threat of closing the Straits of Hormuz. Um, given that Iran depends so much on the Straits to get its own oil out and its own revenue, do you think they'd actually do that? Well, it depends. If the Iranians cannot sell their own oil, at that point, perhaps that is a feasible calculation from their end that this is not that costly for them because they're not losing that much. But at the end of the day, I think at this stage, the Iranians are making these threats or warnings primarily in order to get the oil prices to go up even further, in order to make it as costly as, pol as possible for the EU to pursue this policy. At what point do the Chinese turn around and say to Iran, listen, you know, you, you can't threaten to deprive us of our oil supplies through the Straits of Hormuz and you're driving up the price. We don't, you know, we don't like what you're doing. Well, I think the Chinese are going to say a lot of things both to the Iranians and to the West. I think they're quite discontent with the absence of diplomacy. Most of the diplomacy that we have seen is primarily Western countries speaking amongst themselves on what type of sanctions uh, they are willing to pursue rather than actual negotiations with the other side. I don't think the Chinese are particularly happy with it because at the end of the day, their key concern is to make sure that they continue to have access to uh, oil from the region in order to be able to bring millions of their own people out of poverty. And do you think there is a prospect that these new oil sanctions, which many critics of Iran had called on the West to be imposed for a while uh, will actually make a difference when it comes to the nuclear program? I think these oil sanctions are going to be tremendously costly for Iran. It's going to primarily be a burden that's going to be shouldered by the Iranian people, not the Iranian government. The question is, what will this pain translate into? Will it translate into uh, a capitulation by the Iranians on the nuclear issue, or will it actually translate into further escalation and potentially well, what's war? Your hunch? My hunch is that it's a higher likelihood that this will lead to a confrontation than a capitulation. At some point, the line that separates where sanctions end and where war begins have become very blurry, and we may already have crossed it. Okay, Trita, but from, from the EU and, and Washington's point of view, and of course, Washington today imposed also sanctions on a key Iranian state bank, uh, they would say, we've tried negotiation, which is what President Obama came into office and tried. Um, we, what else do we have? What other uh, 
uh, tools can we use to get Iran to give up its nuclear program? It's indeed been very, very tricky, but to say that diplomacy has been exhausted is, uh, in my view, utterly false. There's been a few attempts, I think well-intended attempts, but this is nowhere close to the type of negotiations that the U.S. itself, for instance, have pursued successfully in the past. Uh, this is not similar to the mediation of the U.S. Uh, for the um, uh, Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland. This is not even equivalent to what happened between the United States and Libya. This has been a few one-off exchanges of ultimatums rather than real negotiations. Okay, Trita Parsi, thanks very much for coming in. Trita, Thank you for having me.